is Dr. Salcedo, your conscious gynecologist. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to be talking about your menstrual cycle. And if you liked this video and you found other videos helpful, please go ahead and share with a friend or maybe even comment below and tell me what you think about uh, what you've learned today and how maybe this applies to you or maybe someone that you've heard about. Today I'm going to be talking about the regularity of your menstrual cycle and how it's a very important indicator of your health. In fact, I'd venture to say that I could probably tell most things about your health by asking you a sim couple of simple questions. I could ask you, is your period monthly and is it heavy? Now I can glean so much information from these two pieces of information. And in fact, I regard, as do most clinicians, that your menstrual cycle is the vital sign for your health. And it is just as important when you go to the doctor's office and they take your blood pressure, your heart rate, and I know they ask, when was your last menstrual period? But I would also venture to say it's really important to also mention if your period happens monthly and how regular and heavy it is. So why is it so important? Well, I think that women know, of women of reproductive age know that their period should come every month if they're not on some sort of birth control or hormonal contraceptive that would modulate that or interfere. But if your period comes every month, and that is a really incredible sense of reassurance that so many women have that, okay, if it's coming every month, I feel like things are happening normally. Now, I will say that I think we highly undervalue the heaviness of a menstrual period, and I'm gonna to get to that, but biologically, when ladies know that their period comes every month, it does make us feel like, oh good, okay, we're good. But if it doesn't, right? If your period doesn't come about every 21 to 35 days, there's this sense, this visceral sense within us about why is that? What happened? Why are we not having a period every month? Are we pregnant? And if we're not pregnant, then what is going on, right? And so for millennia, women have been having menstrual cycles and procreating. And as a OBGYN, as a board certified OBGYN, uh, Mexican American woman, I, this is a professional woman. This is actually really hard for me to say, but women were biologically and evolutionarily created by and large to have babies, to procreate. And if for some reason there is anything that interrupts that, there usually is some sort of external insult that is keeping women from being able to naturally and biologically be able to do so. Now, of course, there are so many other reasons why women may struggle with infertility, and that is not the focus of this discussion today. There are anatomic abnormalities and thyroid and prolactin and strange disorders that are outside of the scope and not common at all. But our biology was designed to support this evolution of procreation and monthly regular menstrual cycles. And so what impacts that? And I would argue that there are two really important metabolic um, factors that play a role in that. And so the first is, is your period monthly and how heavy is it? Well, if your period is monthly, we can by and large say and say that your insulin level is at the appropriate level for you. Now, if your period is heavy, then we can also glean information that your body might be going through some endothelial inflammation, some damage to the blood vessels of your body that might be impacting your blood vessels ability to stop bleeding when you're on your period. And there's a lot of different ways and reasons why that might be. But to me, regular period and how heavy it is 
can tell me so much. So let's talk about the regularity of the period. Well, by and large, the regularity of the period is influenced by a hormone called insulin. And too much insulin, as we know from our PCOS videos and from understanding how polycystic ovary syndrome and hyperinsulinemia affect the menstrual cycle, too much insulin will block your ovulation, okay? And so if it blocks your ovulation, that means that your body has sensed somehow through external exposures that it is not the right time to get pregnant and it will stop your menstrual cycle. Whether or not we as professional women agree with that is a totally different story. However, that's kind of like what the biology does. And it's a protective mechanism. If there is too much insulin in our body, for some reason, it is not a good time to have a baby and our body knows that. And so what are the causes of high insulin? Well, we'll go into that in just a minute because some of the same things that cause high inflammatory levels are the same ones that cause high insulin levels. But the concept I wanted to drive home is high insulin levels is will actually block our ovulation if it's too much for a certain amount of time. And so we know that certain really mild stressors here and there, and even day to day, our insulin level will go up and down. However, chronically over long periods of time, we know that certain stressors can impact the regularity of our menstrual cycle. And we see that like, for example, if we've ever taken a really stressful um, final um, or when we're in college and we're preparing for those things and maybe we missed our period during finals week or maybe if there was a death in the family and we were under a traumatic amount of stress, our um, insulin levels would have rose and we might have missed a period. Um, lots of different factors are uh, involved. And so if our levels are high enough for a long period of time, it will actually block our ovulation and keep us from getting pregnant so that we don't have a pregnancy during a stressful time in our lives. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, and the second thing that I want to drive home is heavy menstrual cycles. Okay. Now we know that the lining of the uterus is um, made up of tiny, tiny blood vessels. Okay. And if there is a certain amount of body inflammation happening, um, it will actually damage our blood vessels all over the body. And so, for example, smokers or high blood pressure or diabetes or low vitamins, um, anything that causes inflammation into our system, our cardiovascular system, will impact the organs that receive that inflammation through our bloodstream, okay? And so just like someone who has hypertension is a high risk for getting kidney disease and heart disease, a person with hypertension also is at a higher uh, risk for having menstrual problems in the form of uterine fibroids or heavy periods or endometrial polyps. And that's because the inflammation from those metabolic disorders can damage the blood vessels and those blood vessels will not work appropriately. And so sometimes we see that as manifesting with um, uterine fibroids, and we can understand that in my uterine fibroid video, but also we can see that microscopically at the lining of the uterus, and that the blood vessels at the lining of the uterus are receiving inflammation, they will not contract well enough in order to stop bleeding when we're on our period. And so if our period is lasting more than five, six, seven, eight days, um, and let's you know say if it's not tapering down by then, um, there is some probable concern that you might be, um, or a patient or woman might be experiencing some endothelial inflammation that's leading to damage at the blood vessels seen through the uterus. And so when you do have your period, if it's not really tapering down by the fifth or sixth day, there really is a concern that there might be some endothelial inflammation, inflammation at the lining of the uterus or your blood vessels that are provoking those things, okay? So what are sources of high insulin and inflammation? Well, we've talked about this a lot, but you know, oftentimes, um, and to really state the obvious, we know that carbohydrates 
increase our insulin secretion from our pancreas, okay? And so for some times, and for our modern day society, it is definitely true that we might be eating too many carbohydrates for what our biology has been used to. And so those excesses in carbohydrates, sugar, causes an increase in our insulin level. And once in a while that might be okay, our body might be able to handle it, but on a day-to-day -day basis, that likely is, through the standard American diet, too much for our biology and leads to the hyperinsulinemia that will lead to blockage of the ovulatory cycle. And so that can lead to irregular periods. And so that is one big source of elevated insulin levels, as well as other problems like hypertension and diabetes and anxiety and depression, um, you know, as well as poor, poor sleep or not great sleep quality, maybe snoring. And snoring is really interesting because as people are snoring at night, their body is receiving less oxygen and so that alone is very damaging to the blood vessels but then our bodies through its sophisticated mechanisms and baroreceptors will start increasing our blood pressure so that we can circulate the same amount of oxygen that our body needs and will require and then that's how we can see that leads to hypertension but then your body will not be able to sustain itself while it's sleeping and it wakes you up. And so that chronic cyclic problem with snoring will lead to high blood pressure and damaging um, oxidation or inflammation to our blood vessels that can lead to all these things too. Sometimes not eating um, the right diet for ourselves. Sometimes some people are really sensitive to gluten and lectin and nightshade vegetables. Sometimes people don't have enough vitamins um, and those will lead to inflammatory response in the blood vessels. And so um, you can definitely check out my other video that looks at body inflammation and its impact. But I want to drive home the point that elevated insulin levels and elevated levels of inflammation can both be very damaging to the lining of our blood vessels and the lining of our uterus. And so I would argue that the first manifestations of cardiovascular disease can be seen in a woman through heavy periods, painful periods, or irregular periods, or all three. In fact, I would say that your menstrual cycle and any irregularity about, of that is actually a window to impending cardiovascular disease risk. And so what's the solution? Well, the solution, of course, is not the easy one, but it's the solution that I talk about frequently, is therapeutic carbohydrate reduction or low-carb diet, really reducing those insulin levels so that biologically your body won't feel like it's under stress. And so also, though, it's not just insulin, it's also other inflammatory factors, lifestyle factors that lead to damaging effects of body inflammation that can damage the lining of the uterus too. So it's not easy, but really truly decreasing carbohydrates is the, one of the first steps that we can do that we can manage um, to help reduce our risk of impending cardiovascular disease like diabetes, hypertension, but also just the really difficult problem of heavy, painful periods. And we're seeing this more and more. We're seeing a lot more products that are coming out that really um, support women through their heavy menstrual cycles. And while that is entirely necessary for women to have normal lives with heavy periods, I just wanna know why do we need that in the first place? There is so much insult that is happening to women and our gynecologic organs that I really do think that we need to look at lifestyle as well as carbohydrate consumption as serious factors that are impacting women's health today. So that's it. I can pretty much tell a lot about your health by your answering how heavy your period is and whether it's regular. And I really hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, go ahead and like it or subscribe and share it with a friend. Share your comment. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you at our next video.